Exactly 70 years ago, on August 29, 1949, the Soviet Union detonated its first nuclear device. Shortly thereafter, the Soviet representative to the United Nations assured that nuclear energy was to be used for national economic purposes, and the USSR did become a leader in the field of peaceful nuclear explosions in 1965 the country began to implement program number no. 7 nuclear explosions for the national economy compact nuclear charges capable of producing monstrous energy were used to solve a variety of scientific and industrial problems from seismic probing of the earth to extinguishing fires at gas wells over the years before the Nuclear Test Ban Treaty went into effect, more than a hundred explosions were carried out. With this video, you can find out how far away nuclear charges were detonated, why they were done, and when they were done. The next, and most popular, area of program number 7 was camouflage, i.e. without releasing harmful products to the surface, explosions to create underground mineral storage facilities. The fact is that the rapidly growing Soviet raw materials economy of the 1960s required a huge number of reservoirs for storing these very raw materials directly at the fields. Traditional methods of their creation looked unreasonably expensive and time-consuming to implement. Instead, specialists decided that cavities in salt formations were quite suitable for such a task. It was assumed that rock salt due to a number of its properties, low permeability, plasticity and fluidity, strength and uniformity, could fill all cracks and fractures, thereby providing stability and tightness of the cavity. A reservoir of this kind was perfectly created using all the same nuclear explosions. The first of them, the Asgar Project, was carried out on April 22, 1965 in the Guryev region of Kazakhstan. Next in line were Western Siberia, Orenburg and Astrakhan Oblasts, and again Kazakhstan. In all, the USSR conducted as many as 42 explosions for this purpose until 1988, but only a few of the repositories created at the time are still in use today. It was the rock salt that failed. In most cases it was not as homogeneous as expected. The rock layers often contained layers of gypsum-like rocks and other minerals that swelled when wet and caused deformations that destroyed the cavities that had been created. Soviet specialists used nuclear explosions to try to reverse rivers, search for minerals, peaceful atom provided a fundamental increase in the depth of penetration in seismic probing of the Earth's crust, very toxic waste in Bashkiria, even crush appetite or to facilitate its extraction. But perhaps the most spectacular purpose of their use has been to extinguish the most difficult fires. We are not talking, of course, about some domestic, albeit large-scale, fires. Nuclear explosions blocked emergency gas fountains. December 1, 1963, at the Erdebulak field in Uzbekistan, there was an accident. While drilling another well specialists accidentally came across a stratum with abnormally high pressure. The drill string was literally thrown out of the well, the rig collapsed, and the powerful gas fountain ignited immediately. It burned for three, three, years destroying up to 14 million cubic meters of gas per day, enough volume to heat a large city, until somebody's bright mind had an idea to kill the fire with even more irresistible force. After a long preparatory work, managed personally by the minister, thrice hero and fan of bathing in atomic craters Slavsky, the operation was carried out on September 30, 1966. By that time, the specialists had prepared two inclined wells that went to the depth of one and a half kilometers in the direction of the emergency fountain. They lowered a nuclear device three meters long and weighing 900 kilograms, which needed additional cooling at such a depth. At 9 a.m. on September 30, it was detonated, and after another 23 seconds the fountain, which according to witnesses roared like hundreds of jet engines, disappeared. It was a fantastic success, a colossal engineering victory. In subsequent years, two more similar emergency fountains in Uzbekistan and Turkmenistan were extinguished in a similar way, but not always such operations ended successfully. In 1972, 
an attempt to extinguish a gas flare in a densely populated area in the Kharkov region ended in failure. The detonated device, rated at 3.8 kilotons, was not able to close the flare, and it had to be eliminated using traditional methods. Nine years later, in the European part of the RSFSR, activation of the nuclear device with a capacity of 36.8 kilotons had not only failed to shut down the emergency well, but on the contrary, increased the gushing from 800,000 cubic meters of gas condensate per day to 1.7 million. But these were only relatively harmless failures. Sometimes a peaceful nuclear explosion ended with radioactive contamination of the area, which was much more dangerous in the long run. In 1971, the Globus 1 project in the Ivanova region, only 363 kilometers to Moscow, the closest nuclear explosion to the capital of the USSR, ended in an accident. Instead of seismically probing the Earth's crust, radioactive water, sand, clay, and gas were released to the surface, contaminating the surrounding area, including rivers and groundwater. Work to decontaminate the contaminated area continues periodically to this day. Similar situations with abnormal release of camouflage explosions and their products to the surface were repeated in 1974 and 1978 in Yakutia, but because of the sparsely populated area their consequences were not so sad. As a rule, industrial nuclear explosions were carried out in hard-to-reach places, each time turning into a real logistical feat the organization and preparation of each such facility required the construction of residential camps, on which the specialists worked for months. The climatic conditions were a real challenge for them. For example, during implementation of Oka project in Yakutia, 1976, gas production intensification, a diesel power station, which provided power to the camp, burnt down. People left without light and heat were forced for several days to cook their food on a fire at minus 30 degrees Celsius. In the same Yakutia in 1978, object Kraton 4, seismic sounding, after the end of the work, the expedition members waited two weeks for a barge to return home. Diesel fuel had run out by that time, and high-class specialists with scientific degrees fed all that time on fish, forest berries and mushrooms caught in a nearby river. One more emergency happened in November 1980, in the Evenkiski Autonomous Okrug of the Krasnoyarsk region, Object Baffalet 1, seismic sounding. Scheduled evacuation of specialists working on the project coincided with an unscheduled blizzard. The helicopter failed to deliver everyone four people remained cut off from the world for five days and literally struggled for survival, searching under drifts of mushrooms and lingonberry leaf for tea. A good plot for a film in the survival genre, with a powerful backdrop in the form of a real nuclear explosion, albeit on a modest scale. Project Chagan Explosion the Soviet Union conducted a total of 124 nuclear explosions in the interests of the national economy. In many cases their effectiveness could be questioned. Gas fountains did not go out, water reservoirs phoned, rivers refused to turn, underground storage facilities were deformed and flooded, and to top it all there were regular accidental contamination of the area surrounding the explosion sites. However, it was not Chernobyl, public protests, or sober economic calculations that stopped this practice, but the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty, ratified by the USSR in October 1990. The experts still have at least nine near-prepared explosions and a host of promising projects, including such large-scale ones as the organization of stripping operations at the Utican Copper Deposit. This is the largest deposit of its kind in Russia, located in such a remote and sparsely populated area, that even in the 1980s the most optimal method of its primary development was considered a series of 20 to 25 powerful nuclear explosions, which would remove 2 billion cubic meters of rock covering the deposit itself. However, the risk of the possible consequences was so great that the project was eventually abandoned. The richest copper Utican is still undeveloped. If you are interested, do not be lazy give me a thumbs up.
And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any more interesting videos on my channel. Hit bell to notify me and share this video with your friends. What else interesting things can you add to this video? Write in the comments, it will be interesting to read.